a ring depicting the head of an antelope. A pendant showing a tattooed hand holding a koi with pink sapphire and diamond rings adorning the fingers. Details that are often only apparent at second glance. Otto Jakob's creations are full of humor and illusions. Like these earrings, which like all of his works, come with a certain vibe. For me, jewelry is only beautiful if it has a vibe to it. And this vibe is often caused by a disturbance that's still there. There's nothing worse than beauty that is too slick. Otto Jakob is self-taught. He made jewelry by copying the techniques of the old Etruscans and the Celts, cultures which had fascinated him since childhood. Today, 10 employees help him realize his designs. They work with unconventional materials, like ebony and tropical seeds, which they mix with gold and gemstones. I probably wouldn't have such a variety if I didn't love so many different materials. I'll get a longing for a certain material, and then I'll work with it until I've had enough. And then I'll often feel the need to work with a completely different material. Before Otto Jakob began making jewelry, he studied painting under Georg Baselitz. But he didn't find it fulfilling and began pouring his creative energy into making jewelry. The goldsmith created this lapel pin for Georg Baselitz, who became his first paying customer. Other commissions followed, including this one for Jörg Immendorf. The late contemporary artist even made a painting for Otto Jakob. It shows Immendorf himself on the Tower of Babel. The golden hand represents the goldsmith. I had the luck, the great luck, the great luck, not only to know these artists, but they also started wanting my works. So I had the honor of working for them, which naturally was a great motivation for me. I couldn't just produce any old thing for them. It had to be something significant. You could say that was how I got started. Now he's enjoyed two decades of success, and his creations find buyers worldwide. Otto Jakob's pieces of jewelry are like little works of art. They tell stories which are often full of symbolism. They're also veritable treasures, which can cost up to a quarter of a million euros. The schlimmste is deco. Decorative jewelry is the worst. It's a terrible concept. Just a hollow shell, there's nothing behind it. I always aim to create content that enriches my life. Many of Jakob's works are inspired by nature, where he finds interesting shapes that can be transformed into jewelry. The result may be earrings shaped like leaves or beetles. I went out into the world, got ideas, and have been doing this ever since. My work is simply a necessity for me. Otto Jakob continues to follow his own calling creating jewelry that's both striking and fanciful.